Hello, everybody, and welcome into a new Patriots film room. I am Evan Lazar of CLNS Media, Patriots beat reporter, and we're going to take a second here to break down, you guessed it, rookie quarterback Mac Jones. We're probably going to do this one every single week. So Mac, his performance in week two, not as sharp reading the field as he was in week one against the Miami Dolphins, and we're going to get into some of the plays that he hit, some of the plays that he missed, and how Mac Jones – A rookie, after all, learns from all of these experiences. So let's pull up the plays now, and we'll get into some of this stuff that we're going to see playing Mac Jones a little bit in this game, but also some of the good things, like I just mentioned. So as we pull up the plays, I want to start with the good stuff. Now, this is the good stuff, right? So Mac Jones sees right here pre-snap that the Jets have a single high safety and that single high safety is shading towards this side of the field on the far hash. Jacoby Myers actually might have pointed it out, and Mac sees it. So what you're going to see is Mac do one of those alert alert calls, right? And he's going to check out of a running play. Patriots probably call two plays in the huddle, one run, one pass. And Mac has that ability to read the safety alignment. If it's too deep, then they're going to run the football. Single high like this, they're going to throw the football. So Mac Jones gets out of this running play with the extra guy in the box, gets into a pass play, and checks into a fade from a condensed split at the bottom of the screen by Jacoby Meyer. So once again, we're talking about changing the play at the line of scrimmage, checking into the right run pass read based off the safety alignment, then getting the route set with Jacoby Myers, resetting the protection to make sure that the protection scheme is different than obviously what the run blocking scheme would be. So getting sure, make sure that he is protected on this particular play and then dropping a dime down the field in the bucket to Jacoby. So as we roll the play, you're going to see that Mac is just going to throw oppo the safety rotation. There's the alert alert. There's the check. There's the different play. You see the kind of nonverbal communication there from him and Jacoby Myers. But the key is, is that he's going to throw away from this deep safety back here. And he's going to know, oh, I got all this green field. Look at all this field over here that I can throw this football into right that's a whole lot of space down there on the sideline so i'm just going to read the field get the safety out of the way get to jacoby on this slot fade and there's the touch throw drop it into the dime nobody has any concerns whatsoever about mac jones's ability to drop this throw in the bucket drive the football down the field okay maybe that's a little bit of a different story these touch passes we saw it last week with james white we're seeing it this week with jacoby these throws are max bread and butter he can just drop this in the bucket clean pocket all day long baby that's a great throw right there from mac jones all right next play up here guess what it's hossy juke yes the infamous Hossi Juke. So what the Patriots are going to see here on the outside, and this is still Hoss, even though these receivers do not run hitches on the outside, they're going to get press man coverage. So against press coverage, Hoss is going to convert on the outside to basically an all-go concept. So you're going to get all these players up the field, these guys splitting these two high safeties, and this is a nice read by Mac. He's going to recognize, I got these two deep safeties. I got, here's the little whip route option route inside by Jacoby Myers. If I get this two deep shell, I know that Myers is one-on-one against an inside lab linebacker in the middle of the field. Nine times out of 10, when you get too high with Haas, this is exactly the route that you're going to work. You're going to go right to this juke route from number three inside against this type of look. Tom Brady made this exact same throw on the game-winning drive in the Super Bowl against the Rams a few years ago to Julian Edelman. So as we roll the play, you're going to see we're going to get the four vert- verticals right up the field. And then you just see this matchup right here in the middle for Jacoby against the inside backer on the option route. And that's just easy pickings for Mac Jones. Just going to take that seven yards. First and 10 becomes second and three. Now we're playing ahead of the chains. Those are the types of things that we love to look for from Mac. And that's the type of stuff that's really going to bode well for him all year long, his entire career, all those types of things. All right, this last play here, I really like this process keeping the feet ready. That's a big term that I want to use here with Mac Jones on this particular play, meaning making sure that your feet are aligning with your reads. You want to have your feet follow you through the progression. So what the Patriots are going to try to do here is they are going to try to get 
Hunter Henry open on this crossing pattern against cover three. The Pats knew, and they tried, to get this over route on these linebackers of the Jets. They knew that this cover three system was going to put these linebackers in single covered situations in the middle of the field, foot races against tight ends, against slot receivers on deep overs. So they're going to try to get Hunter Henry across the field. It gets covered up well. The Jets are able to cut this off. Backside here, he's going to have a little curl by Kendrick Bourne. And all he's going to do is he's going to read that the, the, the uh, linebackers are going to take away this over route. He's not going to panic. He's not going to hesitate. He's just going to get from one to two, and he's going to hit Kendrick Bourne on this hitch. So let's roll the play a little bit, and we'll see this happen. So as we roll it, hard play action fake. Try to get those linebackers up. The linebackers don't fall for it. This linebacker in particular right here, he's going to jump this route by Hunter Henry, and here's the hitch window, right? There's the curl right there from uh, Kendrick Bourne. And as we keep rolling it, you see cut it off. There's the cutoff right there, and there's the throw. So cut off here. Here's this linebacker. He's cut off Hunter Henry's route, but here's the passing lane in there to Kendrick Bourne's route right there. And Mac just good process in the pocket, reading the field well here, sees the linebacker cut off the over route, gets to this underneath hitch, curl, whatever you want to call it, spot route, and the fumble, that, that's not on the quarterback. So those are the good plays by Mac Jones. Still, really clean process in all three of those plays. Good downfield accuracy, good timing through his progressions. Those are positive steps by Mac Jones and carryover, basically, from what we've seen from him in the first game, in the preseason, training camp, all those types of things. Positives for Mac. Now, here comes a few of the negatives. So with this throw, I think there's two things at play here that are important to mention. First and foremost, timing with the deep ball, I would argue, is more important than arm strength. So I think we get caught up a lot of the times in studying quarterbacks, and we say, okay, the timing or, or the arm strength, right, of just that ability to zip the ball in there, throw it deep on a line, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers, whoever you want to call it, these deep ball throwers, you want to see that ball be zinged in there. And some QBs have that kind of arm talent. Mac Jones doesn't. That's okay. It's okay that he's not Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes. But because he's not Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes, his timing on these deep throws needs to be perfect. He needs to get the ball out earlier than somebody like Josh Allen or Mahomes does because he can't make up for the lateness with velocity. So here's what ends up happening on this play. The Patriots, remember the play before, the Jets were cutting off those overs, right? So what they're going to run here is a double post or a dyno concept. So they're going to have the inside post, and then they're going to have a deep post to the outside. This is going to rotate into cover one or a cover three look, a single high, right? And this safety right here is the target. So that safety cannot help to bolt routes. He's in conflict, right? Con he's in conflict here, whether he helps to the inside post or the outside post, somebody's going to be single cover. Somebody's going to be man to man. They can't help both on both the post routes. So that's a great single high beater, dyno, double post, whatever you want to call it, a great single high beater for this reason. Because when you have one high safety, somebody's going to have leverage and somebody's not going to have help. And that's what's going to end up happening here on the outside for Kendrick Bourne is this safety is going to come down and he's going to jump Nelson Aguilar's inside post and it's going to leave Bourne one-on-one -on, -one on the outside on the deep post. So as we roll the play here a little bit, I want you to see that safety jump it. And this is another good read by Mac. This is a good read, okay? He sees this here. He sees that he's jumped this, this one over here. And look at all this space, Kendrick Bourne behind the coverage. So you see they're bracketing this over route here by Nelson Aguilar, right? With these two players, that's going to leave this space here in the deep middle of the field for Kendrick Bourne. And all Max got to do is get the football there and lead Kendrick Bourne into the end zone. Unfortunately, the ball comes out maybe a tick late. He feels the pressure off his left side and gets pushed just a little bit from that left side. And it causes the football to just be a split second too late. 
and he just doesn't have the oomph or the zip to be able to make this throw, and it's behind Kendrick Bourne, and it's nearly intercepted. I think we have the end zone angle of this one as well, because I think it's important to watch it from this angle too to kind of understand the timing and the reason why Mac Jones is just a little bit off on this throw, and that's all it takes, obviously, at the NFL. So as we run the, this play, you see this blitz here off the uh, left side, offense is left, defense is right. Blitz pick up by Damian Harris. He's going to do a decent job of inside outing it, but he does get pushed back in the Mac. And watch Mac just kind of hesitate just a little bit there at the top of the drop. And when you don't have that flamethrower, you don't have that Brett Favre in you, right? That little bit of hesitation – Sorry, the play is lagging here. That little bit of hesitation is all you need. So that little hesitation there causes this ball to be late and behind, nearly intercepted. That is an open throw in the NFL. That should have been a touchdown for the Patriots, and it wasn't there. Okay, so here's another play. Different issue, same result in general. Different issue being this time I don't think that Mac Jones stays on his first read for long enough and comes off of it. We can argue about why he comes off. The left guard, Michael Onwenu, does get beat. Maybe that was it. He does originally get a look here from the Jets that both guys are covered. So the Patriots have this stack alignment here with Jacoby Myers and Hunter Henry. The Jets are trying to communicate pre-snap how to defend this with these two coverage players right there. So most of the time, defense is called banjo. Called banjo call, that basically means that you're going to take the guy that breaks inside, you're going to take the guy that breaks outside, and we're just going to switch this, right? If they end up going cross like this, right, we're just going to switch it and we're going to avoid getting picked. So the Jets bust this coverage. And again, I don't know why Mac Jones comes off this read, but he's looking at it initially. He's staring it down. And here's the point where he's about to come off. So you can see here, Michael Onwenu is getting beat. My guess is, is that he feels that. But if you look over here, it's clear that both Jets guys take Jacoby Myers and Hunt, this coverage is done, right? Hunter Henry is going to be wide open here. And it's clear that Hunter Henry has gotten behind this defense and the coverage is busted. So even though Michael Onwenu gets beat and Mac maybe feels that kind of pressure, this is one of those throws that Mac was talking about after the game where he said, I need to hang into the, in the pocket more and hold the ball in a good way to make better downfield throws. This is what he's talking about. As a professional quarterback, you can't overreact to this interior pressure. What you have to do is one of two things either move off your spot quickly, one of those Brady pocket movement type of plays, elude the rush and then make the throw down the field to Hunter Henry, or just stand in there and take the hit and make this pass to Henry work. So those are his two options, but either way, he's got to hit this for six. So you can see Henry wide open. Here he is. This should be a touchdown, right? This is just wide open receiver, but Mac comes off of it. He gets tries to get away from the pressure gets a little bit flustered and is going to end up throwing this ball for intentional grounding. So that's the type of play that you look at for Mac Jones. These are the types of throws that we got to have, right? The dino concept, the double post, that ball. I don't know if Mac Jones is going to make that throw in the NFL. That's a tough NFL throw that you really have to have a flamethrower to fit it in. He's got to be able to read this bus between these two players and see that Hunter Henry is open and not overreact to the pressure and stand in there and make this throw down the field to Hunter Henry. It's just a must for this Patriots offense to get where it wants to go. And these are the types of easy layups that Mac has to be able to hit. So it's not all bad for Mac Jones from this tape, right? It's not all bad. And here, here's the the beat from the left guard, right? Mike on when is going to get beat right here. Circle it for you right there. There's the beat from the left guard, but I just want you to watch Mac Jones's eyes because he's right on it, right? He's, he's staring right at it here. Okay. He, he's looking right this direction. And I just don't know how he doesn't see the bust. And the only explanation is that he doesn't, he feels the pressure and Mike Onwenu getting beat there causes him to get off his spot and leave it. But that's a throw that reset in the pocket, throw downfield. That's a throw that you got to you gotta have somehow. Reset in the pocket, make it, or take the hit and make it that way. 
Either way, the Patriots need Mac Jones to get that throw, and it can't be intentional grounding. So there you have it. That is the Mac Jones film review for week two against the New York Jets. Some really good stuff early on, some really bad stuff there in the recap. He's a rookie quarterback, folks. Preaching patience here. Let's not overreact to one bad game or a couple of plays that he missed. But those are things that Mac Jones definitely needs to learn from. The double post, is he going to make that throw ever in the NFL? Is he not? The timing is going to have to be perfect for him to get that ball out early and get it there to Kendrick Bourne. But that throw to Hunter Henry... We got to have those. Those are the ones that Mac Jones has to hit. We will come back in the film room later on this week and next week. So keep it right here on Patriots Press Pass for all your Mac Jones film reviews and clnsmedia.com where you can read my written post about Mac Jones' performance in week two against the New York Jets. I'm Evan Lazar for CLNS Media. Thanks for watching, everybody. Our Patriots content on CLNS Media is brought to you by the Legends brand. Comfortable apparel that you will want to wear all day long. Go to legendsbrand.com and use the promo code GARDEN20 for 20% off your first order.